And welcome to this video. I'd like to pick up exactly where I've left off last time, and that is working with the lighting and some of the textures, particularly on this plane. Um, so as far as this plane is concerned, uh, I, I want this to look more like a, a wooden table surface, and the brown color may be okay, but uh, we can do a lot better than that. So to, to make this truly look like wood, we want to take a wood image and put it right on that plane, right? Just uh, almost make the plane like a photograph of wood so it looks just like you're sitting on a wood surface. To do that, we use what's called UV mapping. So I can go into my graphics display window and with my plane highlighted, like I've right clicked on it, I can say tab U for unwrap and tab again. Um, so you hit tab U, hit enter to select unwrap and tab again. And what I've done is unwrapped this plane and basically made it able so that an image can lay flat on this plane. That's what we did. And so now we can apply an image texture to this. And to do that, I like to use nodes. Nodes are very handy in being able to specify certain appearance states within Blender. So in order to start using nodes, you have to be in Cycles Render. I can even open my uh, preview. And I come down to this little menu and I choose Node Editor. And I've got these two little nodes, right? I have uh, the material output, which is always going to be there if we're using nodes. And then I have this little thing that says Diffuse. And, and uh, notice if I change Diffuse to Translucent up here, it changes to Translucent down here. So that's simply correlated to what I choose over here. And I'll choose something like Diffuse. And then I can hit Shift A and add in a texture, like an image texture. And notice these nodes have green ends and yellow ends and gray ends and purple ends. So the, the idea is you always connect a yellow to a yellow. And when I do that, it turns pink. And pink means I have an image texture, but I don't know what image to use, so I'm just filling it with pink. So to update our image texture, we click on this little open. And I can go into my home folder and choose uh, perhaps my base colors. And I can go ahead and choose um, one of these images that I know what they look like and think would look pretty good. Let's go with wood plain 03 base color. And so now I've got a wood base color, but if you notice my plane is huge, this is very stretched out, and so I need to make this uh, a little bit smaller. So what I can do is scale this image, and I can say I want this scale to be something like 10, and my Y will also be 10. So I basically repeated this image 10 times over in both my X and my Y direction. Uh, so in order to do this, it's best to have a seamless image or one that uh, you can repeat over and over and over and you can't tell that it's been repeated over and over and over. Or you can just shrink your plane size, one of the two. Uh, so I can make my light a little bit brighter. So I can select my light by right clicking. I can choose new or I can actually click on this little lamp and choose Use Nodes. And I can make this perhaps 500. And you can see we're starting to build a, a pretty decent scene. So now I've got an image texture. And one of the things is that's unfortunately a limitation is when I import geometry into Blender, I cannot unwrap it. And so I can't put an image texture on anything that I import, only the things that I make within Blender, like I made this plane within Blender. So now I've got a bowl and I've got my bottle. But perhaps I may think that this light is not doing the job that I want um, when I go to, to light these things up. Perhaps I want to make some adjustments. Well, I have several different lighting options. And I can add lights by pushing Shift a, and I come down to Lamp. And under Lamp, I have several uh, options. I have Point, Sun, Spot, Hemi, and Area. 
I'm going to choose uh, just a few for this tutorial, and I'm going to go with perhaps a sun. The, one, the light that we've been working with so far is a point light, and as you can probably imagine, this is just a literally a point of light. Um, you can't really see it because it's invisible, but as I move it closer to this point, you can see it's simply an invisible point of light that I can move anywhere, even apparently inside my bowl. And I can move it behind my bottle, and because my bottle is transparent, you can see it shining through from behind the bottle. So what happens if I move it inside of the bottle. It's kind of cool to, to have a light inside of the bottle. So you can see uh, it's, it's simply a generic light. I'm going to delete that light, and now we're essentially in pitch black. So I'm going to create a sun and show you how a sun is different from a point light. When I create a sun, you can tell that I have very, very even lighting. And as I adjust the height of the sun, you don't have any effects from its height. Likewise, I can move the sun anywhere and the shadows don't change. So the sun is a direct overhead light that, that lights the whole scene uniformly, which is very useful. You don't have to worry about weird angles or things like that coming because of suns. So I can use a sun and a point light in conjunction. And let me move my point light down a little bit. And I can move this a little bit closer towards our camera. And you can tell that the point light can add a little bit more character and shadows to the scene, whereas the sun will act to uh, make the scene quite clear. OK, so now that I've got uh, some more lighting, perhaps there's one more thing that I can uh, do. And I'm going to delete both my point light and my sun. This is one of my favorites because I think it just adds such a beautiful highlight to a scene, and that is a spotlight. So lamp, spotlight. And when I um, put in a spotlight, I can bring this directly over my scene here. You can tell it's a spotlight like you would see if you go to like a play or a show or something. I'll increase the strength, strength to 500, maybe even, let's try something really bright like 2000. And, uh, I can even choose my R key for rotate and sort of visually, um, you know, try to search out a good for the spotlight. And, it, and it's great for casting some shadows and really pointing something out. So I really like using these spotlights. Maybe I'll up this up to 3000 and then add in a dim sun. Lamp, sun. And you can tell the spotlight really does a nice job of highlighting these things. And, and I don't have to have a dark background because I've got a sun in now. So that those are some options that you have for lighting and also for using uh, textures on your planes. And, and as you can tell, what we're building really is starting to look like a scene. So join me in the next video where we go a little bit more into nodes and some of the capabilities that you have with nodes. I'll see you then.